hit a button, Morty. Give me a beat. Oh, this is a podcast. Got my guy, Abdi, on tap today. Appreciate Peace. you coming through, man. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate yeah, man. You, um, looking forward to, you know what I'm saying, getting to know you better on this uh, conversation we're about to have. We've already got into it a little <laughs> bit uh, with, the, with sure. the talks. But um, real quick before we get into it, let people know who you are and what you do. Absolutely, man. My name is Abdi. Uh, I'm a creative artist. Um, uh, you know, I've been creating art for about six years now. Started in about, I started 014 about mm -hmm. yeah um you know i started uh just you know taking pictures on my phone you know what i mean started just taking random pictures on my phone landscape shots portrait shots and so on and so forth um eventually as that um you know marinated i started you know um thinking about getting into photography so i blindly just bought you know equipment um i didn't know what equipment i i, I didn't know what i was doing for a majority of the part you know when you're starting a new journey mm -hmm. you just don't know what you're doing for sure you know so um i made uh, but that's the exciting thing about it mm -hmm. isn't it? i mean you tell me like at least for me that was the exciting it thing is an about excitement it. but then like when you're younger you're not really thinking like when you're young like the money you're spending in the credit card yeah yeah credit. you don't even think yeah, about it you don't it. think yeah. about that you're just thinking about you just want to get to the next you want to get to the next step and you want to yeah <clears throat> so um you know i bought a sony camera thankfully i had two friends of mine who were photographers who kind of had my back okay mm -hmm. so i slightly kind of knew what i was doing with the equipment but then like even in the beginning man i didn't even know how to work my camera you know i was just so you know i had ants in my pants pretty much i got i got i got it out the box i didn't even read the user manual i just started opening yeah, started yeah. flicking off and stuff and you know, one thing led to another, a lot of time and practice and hard work and, you know, and then from there after, you know, I, I feel as if I solidified, solidified myself, you know, uh, in, in, in regards to photography, I started uh, doing something different. I said, hey, you know, there are a lot of photographers out here. There are a lot of creatives out here who take pictures and stuff. I need to step out of this bubble. I need to be unique. I got to carry on my own message. So I needed to do that. So I was like, hey, you know, if I create my digital art pieces, that paint pictures and messages, you know, um, it, it's gonna it's gonna make me different, you know. So I started getting into graphic design, uh, videography, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, just creative art in general. Um, from there, what what influenced that line of thinking that like you had to, or that you were doing something that you felt like everybody else was doing? You had to kind of separate yourself. Man, um, for me, I felt. <clears throat> You know, obviously there's beauty in God's creation, mm -hmm. you know, and I've, I've always taken pride in, in, you know, portraying the beauty of God's creation. But one thing I always wanted to do was I had feelings, you know, I, I always have feelings and I always felt like, you know, creating art was kind of like, you know, how like some people write their emotions and that's how they kind of get through things. Mm -hmm. For me, escaping reality was creating art. You know what I mean? So sometimes, you know, I, there would, there would be every, every piece of art has a dedicated feeling or emotion to it. Um, every single landscape I drew, you know, every single sketch I've created, they all have emotions behind it. Um, I did a, um, <clears throat> an art show at VCU uh, last year, and I was talking about some of my pieces and what they meant to me. And, you know, the, you know, the, the, there was a piece uh, where we had, there was a, a wolf in New York in the middle of the night and you know there there are there are nights where you know i i mean i work overnight you know i'm a, I'm a workaholic yeah, yeah you know so there are nights where i just don't i can't sleep and i'm just up it's me and my thoughts you know and and and, and every message has its own every picture has its own message behind it and that's what makes it so special to me with photography you know i enjoy photography you know but i feel as if you know what i'm saying i don't have that much flexibility i don't have I, you know, I'm not the master, you know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of the puppet, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel as if, you know, creative art makes me different because it, it introduces a lot of, you know, designs and features and so on and so forth because if anyone could snap a picture, it's yeah. not really that hard, yeah. but get behind a, a keyboard, uh, get behind a, a pen, yeah. and start creating matte start painting, manipulating you know, start making yeah. photo manipulation, start blending, yeah. cutting out things, working on the disposition and composition. And putting pieces together of art is a process. That in, in of itself is art. You know what I mean, bro? So. I'm 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 following, <laughs> picking up exactly what you're putting down, bro. You know what's crazy? Because mm -hmm. I, so I started off, um, I started off doing one medium too. Mm -hmm. Like I, it was mainly video for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know you have a camera, so you might as well start taking pictures. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like people would start asking me to take pictures for, them, and I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure. But um, I definitely 
uh, resonate with that feeling of like having to do more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I've recently got into like graphic designing and mm-hmm. um, incorporating different types of things into my videos. You know what I mean? Like sure. I like I'm I'm going crazy with Lightroom. I'm going crazy with Photoshop. Whereas like I used to just only like do Premiere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like it's very I like I really resonate with the with the with the with the notion of anyone can take a picture, anyone can like put a simple video together. It's like how do you take the next step from a creative standpoint? That's kind mm-hmm. of like I I I definitely hit that wall too myself. Where it's like okay, now I got to start with I mean with the gra- like I'm going I'm going nuts. Not like I'm not like my graphic designs are crazy. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is like as far as like how I'm learning and like what I'm trying to create, I guess, through like Photoshop and like all, like I'm using like 30 layers on like, on like one, on like one art project. Whereas like I used to never do that. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's very interesting how, uh, yeah, I really resonate with that. But, um, so when you go from, when you go from grabbing your first camera, the Sony you said, what, 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 what was like the next step? Like, what did you take that and do? Oh, the first day I got my camera, I broke it, man. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you a story. So yeah. uh, I was babysitting, you know what I mean? And I bought a camera. I didn't, um, I, I had the uh, the warranty on it. I had yeah. uh, Apple, I mean, not the Apple, uh, the Best Buy, Best Buy yeah, Geek yeah. Squad Protection or whatever. So my I went out and I took it for a spin. And, you know, I, I popped the lens in and stuff like that. And I was taking a picture by the pool of the young ones and stuff like that. I was, you know, just doing what I do on mm-hmm. the camera and, and, and it dropped in the water. Oh, damn. You, know you literally I mean? so, broke it. <laughs> so, it was, this is not like the stainless steel one. It's like one of the, the older models. Uh-huh. You know? So, um, I mean, I think anything that gets submerged in water is going to get fucked up. Yeah, it got yeah. fucked up badly, bro. You know what I mean? So I took that. I got a new camera. Uh, I got a new camera. But the one thing I kind of do regret in the whole entire selection process is I realize it's not even about the camera. It's, it's about the lens. It's about that lens, oh, man. That's true. Yeah. Facts. The harder, the more dominant your lens is, the, the more quality you're going to get. You Facts. know what I mean? And that's one thing that I realize in this game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, after I bought the camera, you know, I bought the lenses and stuff like that. But, you know, I was still getting, uh, I was still figuring out the whole entire ISO versus aperture, you know what I mean? And, 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 and toggling between the two in the different shooting modes because, you know, there's automatic, there's manual and stuff like that. And I read somewhere that, you know, real photographers shoot in manual because they can control their setting. Yeah. So I was first learning how to shoot in manual. What is ISO this? What number is this? You know, what F-stop is that? You know what I'm saying? And I was just learning what the deal is with these cameras. And, you know, as I submerged in more, you know, work, I started learning how to, you know what I'm saying, adjust the scenes as I want. You know, no, like I can literally go on a photo shoot and know what kind of content I'm looking for and I can nail it get it yeah you know what I, mean? I think so, that's very important too that's like, a lot of time but it's, it's no facts it's very interesting what you said about the uh shooting in manual so like i definitely remember uh when i was learning i definitely mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. uh seeing all that type of content where it's like yeah like real fo- real photographer shooting manual for sure i yeah. tried it not even that i tried it like i still do it from time to time but like sometimes i definitely just use auto because like it's just easier to like because mm-hmm. because i'm a and honestly Honestly, and I don't, I don't try to like put out a facade like I'm the best photographer, or like even the most knowledgeable. Like I'm really not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just like to create. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I just really care about like capturing the image that I need to then take it back to my computer and edit it. You know what I mean? I like mm-hmm. I, I love the editing process more Absolutely. than I actually love the shooting process. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, most of the time, I just shoot an I just shoot an auto so that I can just like capture it get the you know what i'm saying the the thing that i need and then take it back to my computer and edit it but i found myself in manual like never knowing what i'm gonna get uh-huh. and i don't like that feeling of like you know i pull up to a shoot for, and we're shooting for an hour and everything's a guess you know what i'm saying because like i i just didn't have that control over the camera and mm-hmm. and, I, and i i'm still like i'm still striving for that but mm-hmm. sometimes i feel like it takes um, like it's just quicker to you know what I'm saying use mm-hmm. auto and stuff like. That. Do you ever use auto or are you completely? I I used to at first when I was yeah. beginning, you know. And to be honest, like even in the beginning pr- process, like what I was doing was I was taking pictures, and that's another thing I want to get into the the whole entire, you know, 
the people and the, the business part of it is also another. Let's get into it. I'm not, I don't think I'm hip to. Well, I mean, I create, I make, you know what I'm saying, and I get hired to shoot and stuff like that. Yeah, but, like, but for me, it was I'm, like I don't know if I'm in it. Yeah. In the beginning, like I used to use auto, and this one one customer who I was doing photography with, he was like, "Man, you really don't know what you're doing." Oh really? And I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> Your heart dropped. Yeah, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm, like, oh, <laughs> I'm caught. Yeah, I was like, oh shit! The jig and is I was up. Like, yeah, man. I ain't, I, he said, bro, you ain't know what you're doing, bro. You got, give me that shit, man. He, he took my camera. Right? Yeah. He's like, bro, look. And he just started helping me. He's like, look, mm-hmm. man, this is this is manual. You know, you gotta. He, and he taught me like ISO 125. You know, the certain ISOs you use for certain times of the day. And I took that advice. He still paid me. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. he, was, he was just an amazing customer. I was looking out. Yeah. But like for me. You know, starting off, I had I had a lot of difficulty getting support, bro. You know what I mean? That was that was the hardest part for me. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> my biggest thing was um, perfecting my content. So when the right set of eyes look at it, it's, it's a job one. dead gorgeous. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas some people are focused more on, you know, just, you know. Getting it out there. Getting it out there. To me, quality is, 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 is more than quantity. Mm-hmm. So I take, like, it takes me a month to create art. I never just zoom through artwork. Mm-hmm. It, it never happens like mm-hmm. that. So, you know, it, it starts off week one. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to start looking at samples. You know what I mean? And when I start looking at some samples, I'm like, okay, I like what I'm seeing here. What can I take from these? And how can I twist the story in my own way? So I look for uh, stock photos. You know, I look for other photos on uh, pixels.com, squid.com mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I just merged those pieces of art together. So as, as my content started getting better, <clears throat> you know, uh, I, I got a shout out from Fox 5 DC. Oh, lit. Yeah. And then that's when my Instagram profile just kind of started jumping a lot. More. What was the shout out about? Uh, I took a picture of the monument with like, you know, what I mean, fall leaves and stuff like that. Was really oh, I saw cool that. Yeah, that was aesthetic. hard. Yeah. Yeah. So they gave me a shout out on that. And that's when my page started getting a lot more recognition. Mm-hmm. But like before that, I, I used to ask my friends, hey, repost, repost my artwork. You know what I mean? And Nope. <laughs> yeah. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. bro yeah. Love is love, bro. I yeah, got you. Yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah. I, I don't get the mention notification. Yeah. Like, Damn. That's one of my homies. Hey, bro. But when they need a photo shoot, it's, it's a different story. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Hey, bro, what you doing, bro? You, you trying to do a photo yeah, shoot? So for me, it was kind of like getting that respect and, you know what I'm saying, in and, 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 and the business part. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like... <clears throat> when you were young, like who were you most influenced by? Can you think about... Who you looked up to the most, or anything like that? I did look up to that guy right there, Ali. Ali. Yeah, that's my dog. Yeah, he was a uh... man. I got I with regards to that man. I got a lot of people I look up to. Yeah. Right now, you know, I'm a Muslim, so first mm-hmm. and foremost, I, I look up to people in my religion. I look mm-hmm. up to my prophet, the stories of the stories of the prophets, and so on and so forth. But growing up, you know, people like. Here's the thing, though. I, I can only look up to people I can relate to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people who who represent what I'm going through in a way. You know, Muhammad Ali, you know, facing backlash, you know what I'm saying, from people joining the Nation of Islam in a time where black people were hated, you know, in a time of racism. You know, he put everything on the line. He put his money on the line to represent a religion. He stood behind Malcolm X, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And he he, he went through every emotion to pursue what he's doing, bro. He was defeated by Sonny Liston before. He was knocked out by Joe Frazier, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot of people doubting him he, his story represents rising through the mud. Yes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people nips Rising, it. falling, and rising again. Yeah, Nipsey yeah. Hustle, same thing to me. His, yes. his deal, his uh, partnership with Puma, his partnership with uh, Atlantic Records, you know, the, the story behind that, you know, sticking to your guns, sticking to your script, knowing what you bring to the table. You know what I mean? Those are all things that are important values. You know what I'm saying? Those are things I look at and I'm like, damn, man, that's. That's crazy, you know what I'm saying? That's resilience to me. Mm-hmm. So I look up to a lot of people, you know, Nipsey Hussle, Muhammad Ali, um, Malcolm X. Um, let me think here. Uh, Kobe. Kobe. A big Kobe fan. Going yeah. On. Mamba mentality. Um, Derrick Rose. Um, Derrick Rose I, is I another. Love. Derrick Rose is another is another animal, and bro, like uh, there's a, there's a theme with the people that you're talking about, bro. Mm-hmm. Like definitely, there is definitely a theme as far as like rising falling and rising again you know what Absolutely. i mean but he's, there's something to that bro like he's 30 still playing basketball <clears throat> 30 like. still playing basketball and niggas thought he was done after the first knee injury bro and even like now he, he blows through the basket quick bro man, he's like, like but the thing is he's like still killing you know what i'm saying like you'll still like i think i saw randomly one time when he had like a 50 point game or yeah, like when he was well, playing on the timberwolves or something like yeah, you know what i'm saying like but it's like it's like crazy because like one 
I just love stuff like that where it's mm-hmm. like you know like there's a dog in there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. like like there's a dog in there. And even even um even when I saw uh remember when Tiger Woods just won a Masters recently? Mm-hmm. Like things like that like really get me pumped, bro, because it's like when you see someone is at the top for whatever reason they fall. Mm-hmm. Because that's where that's where like a true champion is made. Mm-hmm. I guess it sounds super corny, but like to because the thing is like some in this in this world that we live in, it's very possible to accidentally get up there. <laughs> you know, it's very mm-hmm. possible to like stumble mm-hmm. to the top. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And in anything, you know what All I mean? All these guys too. Like you gotta understand, a lot of these guys they didn't have. Uh, uh, like Nipsey Hussle, he didn't have someone who was in the industry. Who, no, yeah, yeah. Like, like it wasn't like it, all these people had easy routes. That's nah, not what I'm saying stairs, at all. They didn't take no elevators. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hard to get where. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's motivation to me. I hold that. So the thing mind. about that that I find very like interesting is that like one, you work your ass off to get there in the first place. Mm-hmm. Circumstances, whether they're in your control or outside of your control or whatever, like circumstances happen where like you're tested, you're mm-hmm. knocked back down. You know what I mean? Um, and then that's a hundred percent the time when people start to turn on you. Like everybody who loved you when you were at the top mm-hmm. starts to like count you out, talk mm-hmm. shit about you, whatever the fucking case may be. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They start to hate on you. But like that's when you that's when you kind of determine who really has it. You know what I'm saying? Because like if you get up there again, then you know like that shit wasn't fluke the first time. And mm-hmm. like that's really what you're made out of. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I think sure. about it, I think about um I had heard this is on, this is only on the top of my brain because the other day I had heard somebody talking about how um when you know someone who who there's two situations you have someone who like makes a lot of money they for whatever reason go broke and then they um make that money again or you have kind of like we talked about earlier you have lottery winners who like don't have money they somehow come up with money and then they lose all of it you know what I'm saying it's like to me there's something there's something in that mentality of like being able to like ascend yourself, uh-huh. like work hard into ascension, mm-hmm. fall, and then rise back up again. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I find that really interesting. You know, for me, like one thing I think about a lot, even in my religion and, and, and how I was raised, bro, it's kind of like you have a purpose for your life here. You know what I mean? And you're here for a moment. You're literally here for a moment. Mm-hmm. And when that day comes and it's your time to go you need to be able to look back and reflect on your life and look back at it it's like okay i gave it everything i got i emptied myself while i was on this planet Mm -hmm. and now there's nothing left to contribute and my existence is now irrelevant you need to have that level of comfort in what you've done so i look at life man like what you know where where can i start and build my legacy man i I just came back from la bro Mm -hmm. i'll be real with you bro like Man, I was I was in tears, bro. Bro, LA is a yellow tough place to be, bro. Yeah, Nipsey yeah. and Kobe. Oh, like yeah, yeah. I wasn't even like over Nipsey Hustle dying when Kobe died, and that like yeah. floored me, bro. I kind of want to talk about that because I haven't. I don't mm-hmm. think I've had a conversation about that since that happened. You know what's crazy like, though? Go ahead. Everywhere you go is yellow, purple, and blue, mm-hmm. and you look at two people who are so powerful in their communities and their grind, and and, and just look look at them now, bro. Like you know, not a lot of people. There are a lot of innocent people who died in that helicopter that don't get the recognition that Kobe got. Mm -hmm. That's very unfair in a lot of ways. They matter, too, Mm -hmm. because they're human beings. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, Kobe gets that attention. And it's not even about, like, the whole entire, you know, it's it's what is your existence? What is your work? Mm -hmm. What is your process in your, and what you're passionate about? How is it influencing influencing and impacting people in your community? Yeah. The young ones that are going to come after you. You know, the people who are your friends. How is your work ethic? How is your grind? How is what you got going on going to help others? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that Kobe and Nipsey left with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we, growing up as a kid, man, we shooting these jump shots in the trash can. Yeah. We screaming Kobe. We're not screaming LeBron. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously LeBron is his own goat. In his 100%, own 100%. You know what I'm saying? But, like, growing up as but a kid. But it's like Kobe had an influence. And it's even, yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. And it's that influence, too. You Like, when you... I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm a big fan of, you, you want to live how you, you want to be remembered. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when I go, man, I want to be remembered as a man with many hats. Mm-hmm. A guy who was, you know, re- willing to put everything on the line and pursue what he's doing. A man mm-hmm. who was ready to go through every single emotion in suit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's nice. that's just me. That's the kind of mentality I have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's everything I, everything in my life, bro. Everything in my life. 
I bring that into it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that mindset of, hey, you know what? You know, the aggressive finish first. The aggressive finish 100%, first. 100%. Man, it's a, it is college, about being bro, aggressive. Yeah. When I was in college, bro, I was grinding the books, bro. I, I, I was on my shit. You know what I'm saying? And like I finished first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My grades were stellar. And that's just life. It's, it's, it's about who's who's willing to, man, you got to take the stance. You're willing to die behind what you believe in. Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's something I learned when I when I look, when I I watch Nipsey's interviews and stuff like that. That's something I pick up on. And I'm like, man, how how passionate do you have to be to be willing to sacrifice your entire existence behind what you do? Yeah. I read somewhere, man, when he got shot, he said, man, you shot me, you got me. Yeah, man, yeah. If I got shot, I'd be, I'd be crawling, man. Yeah, I'd be yeah, like, yeah. I want to live. So you got me, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying, yeah. bro? Like, you got to, like, look at, like, how, like. I don't know, and that that comes back to the mindset of abundance, bro. Yeah, you know I, I I want to touch on the um on the Kobe and the Nipsey thing, bro, because, mm -hmm. like you said, influence. Um, there were other people that died on that helicopter. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they are important people. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure the people that are that know them mm -hmm. are like mourning and celebrating them the same way the whole world is like mourning and celebrating Kobe. The reason the whole world is mourning and celebrating Kobe mm -hmm. and not those people is because like. We just don't know those people the same way we know Kobe. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Like we know what he stood for. Like we know, like you, you know what he stood for, bro. Mm -hmm. you, you know why? You know what I'm saying? Like this nigga talked about it all the time, bro. Like we have a whole mindset named after him. You know what I'm saying? Or like crazy. after his way if of you thinking. Know basketball. If you know what a basketball is, you know who Kobe was. Yeah, you don't even have to care about a basketball to like ha and it's not even just like knowing who kobe is it's like actual admiration for the guy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying people who don't know the sport actually admire the guy and like mm -hmm. we're sobbing you know what i'm saying when he was gone you know what i'm saying and nipsey also the same way like i definitely those were two people that i definitely cried when like i found that out because it was just like damn like one you realize that like Life is really just not in your hands. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't think any of those, either of those people felt like they were done with what they had to do here. You know what I mean? But it was their time. And you said something earlier about, you know, when you're doing, when you, you're, you're here to fulfill your purpose. You mm -hmm. feel me? And it's crazy because like, I was telling my homie the same kind of thing. Like, and then even kind of what I, what I, like my, where I'm going with this whole like exercise your brain type thing. It's like. Mm -hmm. It is in a sense of like fulfilling a purpose. You hear all these stories of like um, people who work for 60 years, they retire and then they die. You know what I mean? It's because they stopped doing the thing that they were getting up to do all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like retirement is what kills people in a sense. You know what I'm saying? It's because your brain's not working anymore. But just to the point of just to the point of fulfilling your purpose, it's like Nipsey, I'm sure he had more to do, but like what he did it could be wrapped up in a bow like like this is the story like you know what i'm saying like that story like where it stopped could be the end of it dog like mm -hmm. bro like bought the block that he used to hustle on and like employed all his homies mm -hmm. had i was dog i was at a fucking like what would you call it like a fucking par not a parade but like he was having like a fucking block party mm -hmm. at the marathon store i was there like maybe 2 months like he died in april i was there mm -hmm. he died in march, what? march march late march Late March. I was there in like February. Like he was he was there. It was like a big ass party in the fucking parking lot of the marathon store. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like this dude really like did what everyone's dream. He was there a lot essentially. too. Yeah, yeah. It it was it was, like he really did what you know people would dream about doing and then he was killed right there like mm -hmm. right outside of the store that he built that's it's like a fairy tale bro you know what i'm saying like a hood fairy, fairy tale but like you know what i mean like you can't write no shit like that but yeah i think we could go on for hours if we stayed yeah, there yeah absolutely um the next thing i want to ask you is this is kind of a random random question mm -hmm. but it's something i like to ask folks to see what they say mm -hmm. if you if you uh had to attribute yourself to having like a superpower Mm -hmm. What would you think it would be? And what I mean by that is just like something that if you look at like your circle of friends or your clique or whatever, like what do you do the best out of like anybody else that you know? I wish I could read through people, man. You wish like, you could? could get, I'm going to see if you understand this. Okay, right? yeah. There's a let, me, let me see if I can follow. Being able to like me wanting to be able to read through people and understand their intentions and mm. what's in their hearts and minds. 
is a power you'd understand I want. Yeah, no, facts. And I think, you know what's funny, bro? You know what's funny? No, that's facts. But you know what's funny? I think that's, you don't a, know. You I don't think know. that's something you can cultivate. I do think that's something that you can learn, bro. Because I think that's something that I learned. But that's through actions. Like, I, I wish I could just, like, kind of read somebody's mind. Like, you oh, can, you, can, re- you can, you can, maybe not their minds. No one's, mm. and I don't even think that would be safe. Like, no, if I, I had a superpower? Okay, yeah. Okay. Reading someone's minds, you would want to know people's thoughts? Yeah, like what that's the sc- I would. I literally don't want to know people's thoughts because people think some fucked no, up people shit. People like their intentions for you. Yeah, like yeah, who's facts. real, who's fake. Yeah, you know? but I do think that's something that you can learn. I think that's something that you can um, like cultivate, bro. Mm-hmm. Because I, 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 to me, it's like emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. Are you are you familiar with that term? What emotional intelligence? Yes, yes. Okay, so like just like emotional awareness and like kind of being able to uh, touch on people's. Verbal and nonverbal cues. I think that's definitely something that you could work on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I and I, the only reason I say that is because it's literally something that I've worked on. Man, I don't know how you mastered that, bro. But uh, through like master. reading, through I reading and learning about yourself, bro. Here's the thing: I yeah. read somewhere that emotionally intelligent people they put a pause between action mm-hmm. and reaction. Hundred mm, percent. And that's what makes you emotionally, you know, intelligent. But like it's 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 not it's easier said than done. Hundred percent. Like you you'll you'll see something, but then like you your first instinct is to address it. But then like it takes a real man, a man who's really emotionally intelligent, to fall back and just submit to the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And let the moment take precedence and just breathe and understand what just happened and just submit to the moment, breathe and just and think about what you're about to do. Because you will never feel the same way. Yeah. You, like one day you'll be very mad. The next day you won't feel the same. And if you move on your emotions, then you're not it's very like, interesting you know how you put saying? that. Submit to the but moment. Like it's easier. Yeah. It's it's really hard. I swear it's really yeah. hard. Yeah. You know I'm what's interesting, bro? That, you know what's interesting, bro? Like literally before you walked in, and Anna, tell me if I'm lying. I literally said to her, the things that are the easiest to do in life, or what? I don't even remember exactly the words that I used. I feel like I, I said it very profoundly. But it was like, it was something along the lines of like, all of the things that are like worth doing for like mm-hmm. personal growth and development are like the hardest things to do. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So like when you're saying, you know, it's easier said than done, of course it is. You know what I'm saying? Because like the easy thing to do would be to not even think, it's just to react. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's how people get themselves in fucked up situations. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All the time. So like, I th- like you're absolutely right. In the sense of like, there's, there's, there's something that you know. Uh, I wouldn't even just say only emotionally intelligent people. Like people that have a certain level of success, I think they have a certain level of like stillness between um, events happening and how they handle that event that just happened. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like you have to be able to kind of like relax and just kind of like calibrate where things are, like where the moment is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think. That's that's a practice, bro. Like you just practice that. Like there's no there's no like, oh, I want to do this and then tomorrow you're better at it. It's like you practice it every day for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it sounds it sounds crazy like, oh, practice every day for the rest of your life. It sounds crazy. But like what's valuable, I think, is that um when you start on the path, it's not going to take you their whole, your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's going to take you just doing it a little bit, but understanding that like you're you're never going to feel like now I got it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like now I know how to do it. Like I'm I'm one of the self-proclaimed, I guess. I'm like really I'm a really calm person. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like it as far as like getting angry. I can you you'll find me in the middle of like a heated conversation, but it's because like I can get heated about like things that I'm talking about in a in a respectful way, but like you won't really see me like flip out out of anger. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But that's because like that's not the person I want to be portrayed as. You know what I'm saying? That's not the person mm-hmm. I want to be viewed as. It's not because it's not hard for me to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's very hard. It's just I would rather, you know, not be seen as somebody who, like, barks at people. And I, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather be seen as, like, you know, someone who's cordial and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I, mm-hmm. I make the decision to not, you know what I'm saying, lose my cool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of how you feel, Knowing deep down inside that like this this feeling is gonna one day vanish and you're gonna be good again and you're gonna be doing what you love doing, you know what I'm saying it's it's a good feeling, bro. Knowing that yeah. not everything is gonna last. You know Facts. Facts. And man, I can't wait till I can say, hey man, time has ran its course. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, man. Is that is that what you feel like? Because I know you said um, earlier 
um, that you're not in the best mental space. And you can go, like, wherever you want to with this. You know mm. what I'm saying? I'm not trying to, like, put you out there or anything mm. like that. But, like, when when you feel like that, how do you... But you also said, it's crazy, because you said literally in the same sentence that you're also happy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. just, I guess, I guess, kind of, like, elaborate on, like, what you mean by that. Like, how could you be experiencing both? Because I I believe it. I do experience both. I, I, experience, sure. some, I, I experience very down moments, but because of the place that I'm in in my life, I know I'm, I'm better equipped with how to handle the down moments. Mm -hmm. So, like, I want to know, like, how do you, in your head, how can you exist in both spaces where you're loving life but also like you said not in the best mental space man um man just trying to be as alpha as possible pretty much so like, trying I've to be been, as alpha as possible yeah i've been mm -hmm. i've been like pr i pray i do a lot of yoga you know I, I hit the gym to relieve stress yeah um i recite a lot of prayers i i i, I play basketball I, I i create art and so on and so forth you know i try to keep myself busy <clears throat> But I can't lie, man. There are moments where we just find ourselves, you know, taking a break. Maybe you're walking somewhere, you're on a, on a lunch break, or you're driving back home from the gym, and you'll catch your mind wandering and drifting somewhere else. And that's yeah. when you want to listen to a podcast, or you want to listen to, or you know, read a book or something like that. But there are times where you just can't escape reality, bro. No drug is going to numb you. No amount of weed is going to numb your, the back of your brain. You know what I'm saying? Where the memory takes place, you have to learn to defeat. You have to defeat your emotions. And the only way to defeat your emotions is accepting and embracing how you feel at the moment and not letting the world see it. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and this is very toxic and poisonous, but I'm learning how to bottle my emotions. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it a lot, you know what I mean, easier to bottle myself. Like, you know, I'll see something I don't like, but I'm not going to say nothing. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because I, I, don't, I don't want people to really feel like they can get a reaction out of me. Now, with the knowledge I have and the resources and the experiences I've been through... I realize, man, when people see how how what can trigger you, they'll only use it against you. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I was gonna say, is it bottling your emotions, or is it just like you not internally dealing with them? I'm, yeah, I'm dealing yeah, yeah. with it, but I'm not showing it to the person. Yes, Back in yeah. the day, man, I'd crumble. Yeah. I'd crumble like a little, like a little bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I'd crumble, bro. I'll be real. Not nah, facts. I get when it. I was younger. I was a lot more emotionally, you know what I'm saying, immature mm -hmm. as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I know how I felt all the time. Sometimes I, I react on instinct, and I'm a human being, bro. I'm not perfect, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes right now, what I'm working on is emotional intelligence, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, even with my family, I'm a, you know, someone's going to violate my space. I'm not going to react, you know? I'm, I, I calm down. I try to, in the on the basketball court, I'm always trying to keep my calm. Because if someone can get you out of your character, they have power over mm -hmm. you. You know, power is a man who can maintain his emotions. That's real power. Mm -hmm. Being able to bottle your emotions, that's powerful. You got to understand, like, patience to me is like understanding that every storm will be preceded by sunshine and rainbow. Mm, you know 100%. I mean? And I think of that, and I think of that, I'm like, one day, I'm going to look back at all this and just laugh. Mm-hmm. You know, man, I used to trip off that. Man, remember those days? Hey, remember that, remember that girl? Or remember that guy? Hundred percent. Remember that one time I got fired and I was, I was tripping. Up. You know what I'm saying? These the, the moments of hardship, just man, it's 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 needed in life. I yeah. can't lie. It sucks. I'll be real with you, bro. When you're going through it, it's not it's not something you like. But I'm thankful for it because I know I'm gonna use the pain, whatever my situations caused me, for something far greater than that. I, I, I feel I I see myself on a billboard somewhere in New York one day, bro. For real, like, yeah. I really think I'm. I really think I'm gonna be the. Shit. I hope that happens for you, bro. And and what's funny, bro, is that you that you you got to believe it first Absolutely. before anyone else does. You got to. Bro. So like for you saying day. that, I'm like, yeah, that's hard. That's, I love that. Me, you know what I'm saying, like, bro? Like I have visions and inspirations to become the greatest, the greatest thing possible. Yeah, man. Anybody who's ever looked down on me, I swear to God, will one day be like, wow. Facts. I remember it's, that's the fuel, they bro. And credit. it's funny because I, I feel like heartbreak and like not even just heartbreak, but like, and I don't mean like re just relationship heartbreak. I mean, just like rock bottom or whatever that is for you or any kind of like major setback in one's life. To me, that's always the make or break point. Always. It's always like this is either going to be the thing that turns your whole life around for the better or it's going to be the thing that turns your whole life around for worse. You know what I'm saying? Like we talked about some people. I don't remember if it was on air or off air, but we talked about some of these like public figures who rose to the top and then fell. Like you have you have so many people that fall down and they stay there, bro. Like they stay there or they like 
they just keep falling. The, 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 the fall never stops. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But like you also have people who they go through something traumatic or something terrible. And that's like the catalyst for them like turning their whole shit around. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like I'm a very big believer in like pain is not to be like masked. It's to be internalized and used as fuel to like propel you to do like the thing that you're really supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you need that chip on your shoulder to really do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a chip on my shoulder for why I started doing this shit. And then now it's built up so much momentum that like now I just am doing it just to see how far I can go. You know what I'm saying? But like you gotta I live your entire life with a chip on your shoulder. Like- yeah, but the thing is I'm I'm finding new chips. You know what I'm saying? I'm finding mm-hmm. new chips. You know what I'm saying? Like I just got turned down for a job that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And like now I'm like, fuck it. Like they're gonna see me too. You know what I'm saying? The same way I was like, my ex is gonna see me. Mm. These niggas are gonna see my shit too. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like it's 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 all it's always a new chip. I'm always finding a new chip. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? So like that's Absolutely. very interesting. But yeah, man, this has been a dope conversation. I definitely want to be respectful bro. of love your time, love. not keep you here all night. Love so we're gonna get ready to wrap up. But I did, I got a couple more questions I want to ask you, man. Mm. Um this is something I like to ask pe- people uh from time to time. If you had to think about like a character uh, whether it's fictional, from a book, movie, TV show, whatever, character that you really resonate with, who, who, who would one be? Man, that's a good question. Squidward. Squidward? <laughs> yeah, Squidward from SpongeBob, bro. That man is an adult. You yeah. don't like drama? Oh, yeah, yeah, He puts yeah, his yeah. arms in at the shop, yeah, and he yeah, yeah. Right back to the crib. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then you see SpongeBob and Patrick annoying him on the lawn, you know Trying to get into some shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like, I feel as if Squidward lives, mm. like, a real grown adult life. You know? That's very in line with what we've been talking about, too. Yeah, that's very in line. Squidward, that's very... Squidward that's, ain't with the shit, So man. random, nah. a busy, busy guy. Like, Hell, yeah. I love Squidward as, as an actor, like, as a cartoon character. Yeah. Squidward's my favorite, like... Like, I was that one kid in my family, like, man, everybody's screaming, I'm just trying to get some sleep. Or, That's me. I'm playing basketball, and all people are calling me, or, you know, I'm I, I, I'm, I'm doing something, like, homework, and people are bothering me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always wanted peace. And, yeah. And, and, That's and, me, bro. I keep my phone on. I keep my phone on Do Not Disturb, and it, like, mm-hmm. really bothers people. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, don't hit me unless you, like, absolutely need me. And if you absolutely need me, then, like, it'll ring. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's like... If you just got to, like, you know, I don't know. I just don't, I, I like to focus mm-hmm. on work, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? In the very same way. So it's like, I need to be like, I, I just don't like the little distractions of the buzz, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. at the, in this day and age, like everyone is a phone call or a text away. So it's like people take a, take advantage of that. People really mm-hmm. abuse that. Like, mm-hmm. hey, Mac, what was that restaurant we went to? Like, dog, stop. You know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm in the middle of, you know, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you had a billboard. That you could put a message on um, to get to the masses. What, what would you put on that billboard? Focus on your purpose, man. You're here for a reason, you know. And you know, the, I said this before, but the time you spend on this earth is is the time you should be creating your legacy. You know how you want your story to end. What do you want people to take from your life? What lessons do you want people to take from you? That's that's what we live for. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody in history has had a lesson, you know, taken from their life. I want people to look back at my life and be like, man, I got, I'm learning this from the homie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is what my bro stood for. Mm-hmm.